Okay, today we begin a new chapter on Kuf Yud Zayin, which is called Kula Shulcha Shutfim, the partnership that we have with the Gad Baruch And in the English book, we're going to be on page um, 141. Yeah, 141. Okay. Three mitzvos, our partnership with Hashem. Okay, so chapter 10. Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, and Mila. Now, what, are, what makes these three mitzvos unique? Well, we know the Greeks targeted us specifically with these three mitzvos. Um, first blush, right? These are the ones that they told us they were forbidden to be mekayim. Where do we know this from? This is a medrash. It's, it's quoted from Otsar uh, Midrashim, but, uh, but those are the mitzvos that they prohibited us from partaking in. Why did they attack these three mitzvos? Why not, you know, ribis, which is a real insult if you're not Jewish, right? I can charge you interest. I can't charge him interest. That's a bit, that's a bit, there are a lot of mitzvahs that you would attack. Why? Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe they needed us to be the money, the money lenders. But what, 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 what was unique about these three? So Bira Inyan Nira came. Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, Umila, Elo Mitzvah, Seyechidis, Mibain, Kol Mitzvah. These are the unique mitzvahs among the various mitzvahs. Um, there's no, it doesn't make sense to an outsider, right? There's no connection whatsoever to Rosh Chodesh. There's no connection whatsoever to Bris Mila. There's no connection to Shabbos. These, they could. Why would they, why, why, why would they celebrate Rosh Chodesh? Right? They have a solar calendar. There's not, they. It's new month. It's starting, you know. But it's not their month. It's a calendar they don't even keep. No, okay, so you can say the calendar, they don't, you know, they don't let them know. Right. Yeah. All right. They can All right. The, when they, it's like the, the notion day of day an, the notion of a new, of a new month, you know, is why don't they have, you know, they, they maybe they'll celebrate the February 1st or April 1st, whatever, right? Okay. Well, Fool's Day. So it, it could be, it could be there's that you can argue, but the point is that he's suggesting that they, that they don't really, I always heard these three explained is that they are irrational uh, commandments. They're, they're sort of, and there are many chukos. There are many, uh, uh, there are many laws that don't have, uh, they don't have a rational explanation, but, uh, they, but these are chuk. Yeah, these are, Shabbos and Mila are very, they choose these. I mean, those are the things that make them different. Yeah. Or you yeah. keep the community together. Maybe the, the idea was to, um, to break down the community, and so if, if people were no, no longer keeping Shabbos, well, and you couldn't identify any males because they didn't have a bris. Well, he's likely alluding to is the is the halachic reality of these three. So the uh, the Rambam writes in Hilchos Malachim, Ben Noach Shirot Lasos Mitzvah Mishar Mitzvah Satoru Kedei Lekavos Char Ein Monin Oso Milas Oso Kelchosa. If someone who is not Jewish wants to perform one of the mitzvahs in the Torah, we let them do so gladly. If they bring a carbon, we're like, please come to our Beis HaMikdash, bring a sacrifice, serve God. We're very happy to spread the, the light. Nasan Sadaka Mekabman, you want to give Sadaka, we'll definitely take your money, that's for sure. Right? We're always happy for anyone to participate in a mitzvah. That's 610 of them. Im goi rotzalit arech, it's a Yehudi b'leo seder, lecho matzah. I want to learn how to eat matzah. Efshar lulamid oso lechol kazayis matzah. You can even teach him how to eat matzah. Bechdeachilas pras lukaim is a mitzvah. Who afi kavah al kach schar. It turns out, according to what he's saying, is he would receive some sort of reward. Chain shar mitzvos mezuzah tefillin titis go yachol lukaim al kavah lein schar. He could take it on and receive schar. That's according to the Rambam. It's reward, reward. Isn't that amazing? Like you can actually start giving out this in the streets or it's filling campaigns for everyone, right? Ah, we should more Shabbos, but to observe the Shabbos, Asr Lagoi, it's actually forbidden. It's a strange, strange restriction. Nachrisha Shabbat, Chayev Mita. If they keep the Shabbos, they are Chayev Mita. Says the Gemara in Sanhedrin, Shabbos, he mitzvah shalagoyim, ain't shum They're not allowed to keep Shabbos. Goy. Stop. What are you right? That's the joke. You know the joke, right? Yeah. I always tell my favorite joke. There's two friends in yeshiva, and one of them invites the other one for Shabbos. He says, "Why are you coming?" He says, "I can't. I'm you know, not Jewish." What do you mean? We've been learning together Harusa for 20 years. I know you know Shas Balpeh. This is well, you know, I'm 
I'm always careful. I'm always learning. I'm always careful to Michal Shabbos. I always violate Shabbos. I'm always, what are you talking about? He's like, I, I, I've spent Shabbos. He's like, no, I carry a little paper clip in my pocket outside. There's mm -hmm. an Eruv. Says, I don't hold that Eruv. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so the Goyen Masuka Litfos Ketzad Nisan Bichlal Ishmor Shabbos. Give him the idea that he could he could be uh, Shomer Shabbos Ukemosh Matzim Bechazal Amar Li Iser Giura Ki Avinan Ba Amri Yosan Amrinan Yehudai Lo Mintere Shabbosa Di Mintere Shabbosa Kamakisi Kmishtachri Bishuga When we were not Jewish, this is who says this. This is Shmaya uh, Avtayan. I don't remember who said this. Hainu Omrim. Shehudim enam shom Shabbos. We said the, the Jews are not shom Shabbos. Ki im heim shom Shabbos. If they would observe the Shabbos, reish kama or nakim berachov, there would be there would be a number of curses in the street. Kaitz yitachin she ishnu are not berachov. They im enam marim mosa. They're not lifting it up. Ze lo yachol yot vaday heim machnisim es arnak kisim bichavei. For sure. Uh, otherwise, there would be money left on the t on the table. This is not an anti-Semitic brag. This is like you know you wouldn't leave, meaning meaning there wouldn't be anything. If there were Shomer Shabbos, there would have been things left in the streets, in the Jewish streets, right? They would have muksa. They wouldn't have picked up pick, uh, picked up. So this is an anecdote about a non-Jewish or a person who's now Jewish who's recalling when he was Jewish when he's not Jewish. Um, Named Isser Gira, whoever Isser is, right? Um, the guy's name is Isser. And this is the name Isser. Isser became a Jewish name. I don't know. But it, like Isser's not one. No. Okay. So, so this, when, when so anyway, the, the recollection here is what they used to do. The point is that from a non -Jew, Jewish person's perspective, Shmir Shab is a foreign thing. So to Rosh Chodesh, there's no relevance between a non-Jew and Rosh Chodesh. HaTorah Omeris HaChodesh Zelachem, this month is for you. HaYetzirah Hazos Shel Rosh Chodesh, Shehi Be'etzim HaTeva Shel Ma'agel HaShana. This creation of this idea called Rosh Chodesh, which is the which is the the, the nature of the, the cycle of the year. Nisna Leveis Din, La'am Yisrael, Vahem Lama'as HaYotzer Mesa Rosh Chodesh. So, um, so, what it was given to the Beit Din, to the Jewish people to decide when the holidays fall. The Medrash says that every Rosh Hashanah is Kansim Malach Hashara. It's a Kodesh Baruch Omrim Emas Rosh Hashanah. That every Rosh Hashanah, the Rosh Hashanah, the angels gather to Hashem and they say, "When is Rosh Hashanah going to fall?" V'hu Omer V'li Atem Shalom. Why are you asking me? Says God. Ani V'Atem Nishol Beis Din Shomat. Let's ask the Beis Din there what what when they declare the new moon. Shemar V'Chol Karenu Elav. The Jewish people control their own calendar. Not just the annual calendar. There are many things that I guess are established, are koveya by the Jewish, uh, uh, by the by the Jew. Hazal Omrim, right? Like the protocols the elders of Zion say, many things we control. Now, this is talking about uh, what well, we'll talk about. What it's about. So it says. So this is uh, talking about um, this is talking about what he called uh, violations of arayot of uh, promiscuous um, forbidden acts in the Torah. So if a person if a if a woman is above the age of three years and one day, right? Um, in this case, you'd be chayav skila. Uh, for a certain, for, I don't know which act of arise the Gemara is talking about. And you shall me. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Right. A no, he is not Baskila. So the question is what happens if it's the third birthday, but then the basin decides, wait a minute, we're going to. We're going to delay the month one more day, right? Because they see the new moon hasn't arrived yet, and the delay one more day. She's not actually three, she's two years and almost three. So then you've uprooted the Isra Skila. What it's saying is that it's saying is that uh, is 
uh, again, I have to look at the context, but whether it has to do with whether biologically the woman is considered, whether, whether the Betulin status, the status of being a virgin, restores itself after three uh, before after after three years, that before three years it's considered that uh, it restores itself, but after three years it doesn't. So that affects a myriad of different isurim in the Torah. The rabbis are are changing biologically the girl. Mm, uh, no, 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 that's not that's not what it's saying at all. What it's saying is that it's, again, it's, it's the principle that that the base din has the ability to declare. The, the 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 physical status of her one day, which it was a biological marker at age three. Now we're saying, wait a minute. Well, the fact that you declared the new moon, her biological marker has changed one day, one day back, which is like a miracle. So how does how does Chazal have that ability? That makes sense. Forget about the forget about the the issue that you're mentioning here. That's not a that's that's that's. I know that's not what I'm getting at, but I, right. I just get really, really... no. So we have to talk about the context of what we're talking about here, but. But let's say, let's say uh, the Gemara and Ksuvas talks about what we call a Taina Petulin, that, that a couple gets married um, and the Ketubah is worth 200 if she was never married, 100 if she was previously married, right? So, um, so, so there's, a, there's a claim, right, that, uh, that somehow she was assaulted at age five or something, right? So does she not have a Taina Petulin? And the claim was that if it happened before the age of three, she's not considered a, she's considered still a Batula. That's what it has. It wasn't rationalizing this. I'm saying, I don't know the context of this, Kamar. I haven't, I haven't, I don't know the Yushalmi yet. Uh, but, but there are a thousand cases that we could be talking about there, right? We're not necessarily talking about, um, um, we're not, we're not talking about, about marriage to a girl's age two, probably not. What we're probably talking about is whether or not the Batula or not, and that affects. So, so then would affect the, whether, you know, somebody might marry her or something like that, or or whether, um, yeah, uh, co you know, how much she will get. Cohen, uh, Cohen, uh, price the ketuba. Um, we want to was we want to know. Let's say she gets married under the Cheskes Pesulin. She was assumed that she was never married before, and now you gave her a contract that was two hundred, and then it turns out she wasn't a Pesula. So, who? Does she have to pay back the money or not? That was the question the Gemara is dealing with in, in Masechus Ksuvos. Well, the question is whether or not this was um, wh whether whether or not uh, uh, there was really an assumption of the or not, and that's that's where that's all where a lot of this comes up. Yeah, a uh, virgin, virgin. Sorry. Yeah. Right. It got me there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but I mean, it does bring in about that he's going to get skewed. Okay, or not right, I don't know the context so of what. Words, right, it could have been a, a, it could have been an instance of, um, it could have been an instance of of, of rape or, or incest, incest here, and we're so saying the punishment for him, right? So you're saying are we rationalizing this less than two? So I'm saying. Saying if she's under three, if it's, she's uh, under three, uh, she doesn't get uh, Yeah, so I, I, I think we should look up that Gemara because I just I don't know what the context is there. Without, I don't want to comment without knowing that context. But I hear what you're saying. I just, what? I said that your sure homework. No, no, we look up afterwards. I just don't. I don't remember the context. Okay, um, but I think the point he's just trying to make in this in this case is that based in seems to be granted this ability to restore physical properties. Like that doesn't make any sense, right? Like either you're three or you're not. The answer is well, you're three when we say you're three, right? When we when when we declare a new a new month. Okay, that's when Nissan begins. Wait a minute, I thought it began the day before. No, no, no. So if you were born on the 5th of Nissan, and the 5th of Nissan doesn't happen until one day later because the base didn't decide to delay the month, right? All of a sudden, the person's not that old, right? So what he's suggesting is that based in, in general, um, human beings have been given this authority, which, which is clear by uh, calculating the months, which, which, which is almost godlike in nature. Um, this is the third aspect, second aspect. Shabbos doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. Rosh Chodesh doesn't make sense to the rest of the world, right? Yes, you could celebrate a new month, but the fact that you have a hand in creating that time, right? Everyone else says, I'm sort of helpless. Whatever, whatever happens in time in the calendar, I'm a subject of that. When, if it's fall, it's fall for me. If it's winter, it's winter for me. I don't decide when the months and holidays fall. Um, and finally, Mila. 
Rosh Mila, who gam can mitzvah shein l'goy shaychos po. The Mishnah Nemar Konam Shani Nene La Relim. The person says, um, I I'm going to take a vow. We just finished Mitzvah and Darim recently. Now we're almost on Nazir. Person makes a vow and says, I am not going to do business with anyone who is an Arel. Arel means a person who's uncircumcised. And Arel has later, has, since the time of the Gemara, became a colloquialism for a non-Jewish person, right? So it's interesting because the Gemara talks about how if you say Arel um, and there's a Jew who is uncircumcised, you're not referring to him. Because it's become a, you know, a colloquialism. I remember there was a rabbi told me that he was with an old time, like Yiddish rabbi from Europe. And I don't know what they were doing, but they were selling chametz or something like that. And in Yiddish, he said something like, um, like, oh, ask the, ask these, you know, ask this, ask the, uh, the, uh, the RL to come over here, please. In Yiddish. Uh, and he said, what did he just say? So the young rabbi said, he said, he said, we might ask the gentleman to come over here and translate. <laughs> but it, it became like a, like a, Colloquial spe speech and obviously not a not a pleasant way to describe someone. Um, so, but but let's say you say I'm not going to derive any benefit from from anyone who's not Jewish. Motor ba'arle Yisrael, you could then do business with Jews who are uncircumcised, right? Russians right off the boat, right? You could do business with them. The asher b'mulei of the and someone who was circumcised who was not Jewish but had the procedure in the hospital, you cannot do business with them. So what, what what did the person have in mind when they made the nether, the vow? When they said the word RL? They were referring to. You don't know which one you're oh, referring to. Either, they're, either they're referring to every non-Jew or I mean, referring to only somebody who doesn't speak. Right. So it sounds, if you speak literally, it sounds like speaking, is that someone who's literally uh, circumcised or not? So Shani Nenem Olim, Asavar Yisrael, Motu B'moli Okom, She'ein Ha'orla Kruya El L'Shem El Dukham, the Gemara tells us that the way the word Orla was used, as was described in that story with that older rabbi, was described non-Jews. Shenemar kikogoim areli mechol beit Yisrael areli leiv. That when you want to describe a non-Jew, you describe them as arelim. When you want to describe a Jew, right, who is going off the derech, it's an areli leiv. What does that mean? That means they have an uncircumcised heart, right? It's not a physical property. It's a it's a bad trait. It's a bad mida. So because the pasuk describes uh, Jews is Arle Lev when they're rebellious, and non Jews is Are Lim, right? Goya Filu Shemal, therefore, a non Jew, even if he has a circumcision, is a Dainech Shav Arel, is an Arel, Yehudi, a Jew, a Filu Shalomal, as Atmo, Nech Shav Begeder Mahu, unless, of course, he's being ripped to shreds by the Navi and he's been called an Arle Lev. But okay, but he's still not an Arel. Is it like, is it like having a, um, when you're talking about the Arel, it's like, um, are real led. This is the second con most controversial topic of today. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, it's you to like me? it's like it's a barrier. Like when when that's removed, like with the bridge, yeah, and it's like that's what the word that's what the, the word like means. You have a barrier between you yeah. and Hashem. Yeah. yeah, I think Rashi explains that the word RL means to be there's a blockage, right? Yeah, there's a blockage. You've mm -hmm. got two minutes. Don't leave. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we'll finish the last line here. So Im Kane, if that's the case, thank you, Shira. Shlosh's mitzvahs halal, these mitzvos, what are they? Shabbos, Rosh Chodesh, Mila, Mevatos express the nekuda merkazi, nekudat Yehudi, the uniqueness that which distinguishes the Jew. Shuma aleinu, evil isbonin, mai osa nekuda. What is that aspect being expressed in these three mitzvos? So the Greeks tried to attack these mitzvos. Mila, Rosh Chodesh, Shabbos, these mitzvos express the uniqueness of something that is only Jewish and not and not known to the non-Jew. The question is, what is it about these? That's the next question. Is going to now deal. Yeah, I don't really understand this whole idea. Like, did they go around checking men if they were circumcised or not? Like, was that a common? I can see the Greeks. Yeah. they went around making. Amal it. Amalek did this. For the Greeks, right? Also, uh, the Nazis, the Nazis yeah. did this. Yeah. Yeah, you should ask uh, Steve Fagan has a story about his Zaidi that uh, that he um, he I think people were less prudish also uh, classically, but um, or less Tanoa, but uh, they uh, that they, that he was on the run and and they they someone some Nazi guard caught him and said, "Are you Jewish?" He said, "He's like, no, of course I'm not," you know, and he was hiding and he said. 
and and he was about to arrest him. He goes, do you want do you want to check? And he started to open up his belt buckle. And the guy said, no, it's okay. I believe you. Let him go as he bluffed. Mm-hmm. This is an amazing move, right? So, um, <clears throat> I mean, he figured he had nothing to lose at that point, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know how Hashem gives someone the wisdom and the guts to do something like that. But um, okay, but yeah, this is uh, in, in, in the, right, right. But how do you how do you have the courage? I have the courage to do that. Your father did that. Your father bluffed a lot. Father in law. He was in jail with it the same. Really? Similar time, yeah. Wow. Huh. Huh. He told them, you know, you want to kill me, kill me. Just kill me. And then they said, if you're just telling me that, kill me. I mean, you're not scared. The guy got really scared. Yeah. And he just let him go. Right. 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 That's uh. It's true. If you <clears> scare <throat> somebody enough, you know, by, by saying, okay, go ahead and do it. But right. they're like, they don't want to do it. Anymore. Well, you're not. Like, you're not afraid. You have nothing. You have no control over them because exactly. they're not afraid of you anymore. Right. Exactly. It's just hard to do. I mean, it's hard to. Okay. So stira bin Shabbos Rosh Now the truth is, there's a difference between Shabbos and Rosh Chodesh. Shabbos mevatat meser echa nifla shavisa. Shabbos is an expression of a uh, a a a wondrous message called shvita, rest. A kol mafsik, everything stops. Everything's 100% God's. Throughout the rest of the week, person go out to the world, business, to do business, busily business, to find the doctor, go find the best doctors, engage in whatever you have to do, when you arrive at Shabbos, everything stops and ceases suddenly. Az miskale ha'emes sha'olam kulo shayach l'ashem. Then the truth is revealed that everything is relevant to God. Inyan Isra siyas ha'malachos the Shabbos madgish lanozos. This idea emphasizes for us aleinu lahafstik as a kol that we have to stop everything. Mamei l'mashin isharu rak Hashem isparach. And what remains at that moment is God. Rosh Chodesh is the opposite. The soul, the world, is the Torah. What do we say in Rosh Chodesh? Who owns the Torah? Who decides? Am Yisrael. We decide in our base din. We are Machria, not God. In Kena, Shlita, Kola, Ka Olam, Shaychet, Bemeachuzim, Lam Yisrael. So governance is handed over to man. And so Shabbos is where we. Shabbos is where we give, we put up our hands and we say we're not in charge. And in Rosh Chodesh, God says I'm not in charge. He hands it over, to, hands over, over the keys. So these two mitzvahs of the three are sort of opposites. Stira, oh, main vikuach, a debate, a dialectic. Shabbos is the expression everything belongs to God, and Rosh Chodesh is the expression that Akol Shaykh Lam Yisrael everything belongs to the Jewish people. What's the resolution of this dialectic? Okay, so to understand this properly, we can study the Mishnah of Rishon of Mesechas Bava Matzia. Really, excuse me, getting in depth here in the Gemaras. This is a great, uh, is a lamdusha day here. You can tell he's uh, writing this from a yeshiva mindset. I may be quoting this Gemara much. I was a couple of Shnayim Ochs and Metalis. Two people are holding on to a talus, right? Fighting. Whose is it? Ze'omer kula sheli, ze'omer kula sheli. Each person says that talus is mine. Right? Yeah. Such a lady. Well, it's very similar. Shnayim nechnas and beistin. They both go to beistin. Machzik and biyad. Biyad and chutza lemashal. They each are holding on to a shirt. Kol chad toin shekula shelo. It's all mine. Ma'odin. What's the din? Omrim, Omer is a Mishnah, Yachloku, divide in half. Chatsi Shali, Chatsi Shalo. Half is mine, half is yours. We're both arguing, we both on half. The Lili Yeshu should have a question. What's the Yahalacha about Open Shishne and Ashim Yichnas the Vestin, Shem Machzigim Bechutza? Aval Hatayna Shalem, Ena Kula Shali, Ella, Semer Kula Shulcha, Semer Kula Shulcha. What would be the Halacha if they walked into Vestin and each one said, No, it's all yours. It's his. It's his. It's ours. It's ours. And they're each fighting. It's the other person's. That's his question. 
כל החתון של חוץ זה שיחזור ואומר, מה יהיה הדין כאן? מה הוא בלי פלח הבן? כמובן, עלינו לחפש תשובה שאלה זה, זו רק בתורה קדושה. We can find the answer to this in the Torah. לכן הסיפור מעין זה כבר היה לא עולמים. We already had a story. Famous story. The matter tells us in Yalkut Shemani, Alexandrus Mokton. Who is Alexandrus Mokton? Alexander of Macedon, right? Alexander the Great. So what happened to Alexander the Great? And why are so many Jews named after Alexander? You ever meet Jews named Alexander? Because yeah. we got it from this, from this relationship with the, right? Anyway, so Alexander is Mogdon Azal Gabe Malcha Ketzil Avasar Harecha Achoshech. Alexander arrived at a place called Katia, past the dark mountains. It sounds like a scene in Lord of the Rings. We will travel over the dark mountains, right? So Alexander is going on his conquest. He's trying to conquer the whole world. And they passed over the dark mountains. Mosuber Sham Shemelech Katia Yotz Likroso, the king of Katia, came out and he offered gifts. Matanot rabot shel zahav, gold, silver. Alexander Mokton, Sirev, Omer Shiyish lo maspik zah the kesevar. So I have enough gold and silver in my land. I don't need your gold. I don't need your silver, says Alexander. Velo atiti el lamedahech asondayin. All I've arrived to do is to find out how do you engage in your adjudication in law? How do you run your court system when it comes to monetary dispute? That's what he wanted to know. That's all I want to know. I want to learn from the wisdom of the world, says Alexander, right? What do you do when you have everything? You try to grow in, in knowledge. So Alexander came to this place not to conquer them, but to learn from them. So one day, what happened? One person came out, accepted about his friend. Aden Gavra said, this person sold to me a kilkalta. I don't know what a kilkalta is. Kilkalta? In English, it's, I bought a field. Oh, it's a, a field? Okay. Okay. That's fine. So this person, we're on, we're on page, what, 145 now, right? Yeah. I bought a field, and while plowing it, I discovered a buried treasure. Ah, but the treasure doesn't belong to me, since I bought a field and not a treasure. So it should belong to the guy I bought it from. Thus, I maintain that I should return the treasure to the one who sold it to me. And the second man said, no, when I sold him a field, I sold it with all the contents, and therefore the treasure belongs to him. So this story actually came up. Nobody actually talks like that ever. But uh, who was that guy who found who bought a desk secondhand and found like 17... Oh, yeah. So like, yeah, right. Anyway, so lovers man rave they came for the king. The first one said, "I I bought right." Okay, good. Harei lano matzav shavu Ruvain Omer shakol shaych l'shimon. Ruvain saying everything belongs to Shimon. Shimon is saying everything belongs to Ruvain. Zelmer kulo shulcha. Zelmer kulo shulcha. Hamikre bo hista paknu. This is the right the case that we are. We're engaging in Ma Pasak Melech Katia. So, what did the Cassian, the Katian king rule? Amar Leila Chadmihu. Is Lecha Bar Dechar. Do you have? Male son? So, it means a son? Male child? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you have a son? Yeah, do you have a son? Right? Do you have a son? And Amrle in. Amrle Lachmin said to the other person, Islach Bras, do you have a daughter? Amrle in, yeah. Amrle, oh, Zilu bin Sivu, go let them get married. And then the money will be shared within your family. Beautiful solution. Right, right. When you fight, when kings fight, what do they do? They marry their children. Right, right. If you have a son, when they said they're, they're obligated, let the treasure belong to both of you. Yeah. So what do we want to say? So we started out and we said a question. We said that we know, right, Skip the page. 
There we go. Okay. Fine. We said already that... Um, That what happens when each one says, Kula Shilcha, the whole thing belongs to you. We know that when two people are fighting over Talas and one says it's mine, the other says it's mine, they say, Yachok, divide it. On Shabbos, I got along, we talk more about that a little bit, that dynamic and some of the solutions the Gemara, the Mishnah suggests. Or Mishnah says another solution, not that they divide it, but rather whoever, fight, whoever wins, whoever pulls away from the other person wins, or, right? Is Yachok a compromise? Is Yachok a din? When we say they should divide it down the middle, is that a compromise? Or is that the psak? That's an interesting question. Like, is that, are we saying that that is the optimal law or that's like reluctant release of din? We don't know what to do, so we're just going to have to give up and compromise. It's interesting how the, how the Hakiros look at this story from different perspectives. But here, what happened if they both said it was yours? So, Chama, Yosef, Yosef, Tama. Tama, Chama, Yosef, Yosef, Tama, it says here. What does that mean? So, um, Alexander Mokdon. He saw Alexander the Great. Right? Alexander didn't understand what to do with this. I'm like, so, had you been ruling this case, Alexander, what would you have said? Right? Alexander said, Kaplan, Din, Vidin, Umahusa, Nothan, I would have killed them both and taken their both their money. I like that. I think Wait, a, he's he's no longer talking about the palace. He's talking about the treasure that Well, we're talking about the treasure still. Right, right. Show us some Melkatya. Iskabech and Mitra Nochis, do you have rain? Iskabech and Shemsha Nochis, do you have sun? Do you have sunlight, rain? Right? Um, he says, yes, in I'm relate. The king says, "Is kebechon biira? Is is yishlem behemos? You have animals." He says, "Yes." I'm relate. Lo bazchuschon shimsha danach umitra nachis alechon ela bezchus dibik. It's not in your zuchus the sun shines and the rain rains down. Rather, it's in the an the zuchus of the animals. Why? It says, "Adam vehema toshi Hashem." God promises, "Is going to take care of the animals. The animals need water. Animals need sunlight." So do not think that the reason why there's good things in your land is because of you. It's really because of the animals. So what was he saying to him? What, what was this? So, so this is the, is the response of the Katzin saying to Alexander, right? Did Alexander believe? I mean, they had, didn't they have, didn't they believe multiple gods, those Greeks, right? Yeah. It's funny that we would be naming our children after something. Well, there's a whole story. There's a separate story about that, right? Okay, so let's see here. This is a fascinating story. So, Ninas and Reishis Lahavin, let's try to understand Masavar Alexander Mokdon. What was Alexander uh, thinking when he said this? Shekin li chora pasa kadin, shelo kan nira tamid. Mine's rubbed out. Yoser something? Ezeh mushchas. Rotze anashim. So he says here, why should these two men be killed and robbed? Bear in mind that Alexander of Macedon was not a greedy savage. After all, he had come just as well just to study the property law from the Katya's court. Right? He didn't want to study the property law. He would have just killed them. Well, again, he, that would have been his instinct. He's saying, my instinct would have been to do this. So why why would his instinct would have been to do that if basically he was known to be a decent ruler, right? So he's not he doesn't go down in history as a tyrant, that's for sure. Okay. Even though one man's hero is another man's tyrant. So Jewish history is kind to him. So let's understand. Alexander said something very smart. What do you say? That how do you build empires? How do you build a business? How do you build success? It's predicated on the attitude of it's all mine. Greed. Greed is good, right? I want. I want to thrive. I want to succeed. I want to take. That is the building block for all success. Otherwise, you wouldn't open a business. In fact, the uh, the famous Madrash in Bracious Rabbah says that the Pasuk says 
that vihine tov mod, God created man, and man was very good. So what's vihine tov mod? Tov mod, that's the yetzer tov, right? The tov, that's the tov, tov mod, it's very good. That's the yetzer hara. So it says the matter, the yetzer hara tov is the yetzer hara, a good thing we fight our whole life against the yetzer hara, all our demons, right? Why is the yetzer hara so good? El mala yetzer hara, if it wasn't for the yetzer hara, lo bona adam bias, no one would build a house. Why would I build a house? I wouldn't need a nicer house than my neighbor. I wouldn't know anything. Low nasalas, I wouldn't get married, we wouldn't engage in business. Very little success that we have in this world would ever take place if it wasn't for the Yitzhahara. That's the Gemara's conclusion. So we need the Yitzhahara to use it so we have drive, we have success. So, so unchanneled drive is okay. It's just when you channel it for bad, way, bad versus bad. So he. The it's kind of more passive. Yeah. Or productive, or you know, the it's the engine behind getting things done. So you could have a, a full heart wanting to give tzedakah, but how do you do that? Is I'm going to build the biggest tzedakah organization in the world, right? We're going to do it on a mass level. Now it would be wonderful if the two could be separated, but you need that. What the measures are saying is you need that. Human beings need that, right? We need to know that you know that I'm behind it. I remember this this one. Uh, I saw this one. Um, one public uh, Jewish online presence, the guy, his Facebook photo was him bent down on one knee, um, giving tzedakah to someone, to, to an ani, or tending to an ani on the street, right? That's his like, Facebook photo. This is how he wants to be known. It was very nice that he projects that image, and I believe it's part of it's like whose persona is. But then it occurred to me, at some point, he had the following conversation. Okay, hold the camera. I'm going to stand next to this poor guy, and you, you take a picture. Like, it wasn't like he was caught on, like someone took a photo of that. I realize that that's the way he wants to be perceived, right? There's the Yitzhahara there. So that's Yitzhahara. Now, is it good? Is he, is, he, is he saving people's lives? Maybe. And maybe had he not taken the photo and PR'd himself, you know, and showed the world what he's doing, maybe he would not have been successful, but that requires Yitzhahara, right? You have to be a little bit, you know, a little bit of a, of a, of a driven, self-serving kind of person to do that. That's important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But isn't definitely the highest form of purity? It's not that. secret. It's to give, give anonymously. Right. It's not. To but is it the most effective form of charity? It may be the highest form, but it may not be the most effective. There was a great article in the New Yorker a while back about altruistic giving mm -hmm. and really trying to. So, if you were really into altruism, what would be the best way to use your time? Right. So you would say, well, make a dollar in the store. I'm going to give away the dollar later. No, the best way to be altruistic is to make billions, right? And then set up a system which is the most effective way to help people and then not live and not, not use any of that money for yourself, right? But it's first you have to, first you have to kind of claw to the top of every industry and really be the richest person in the world. Then you have to live in like a tiny little apartment on a very meager diet and, and, and make sure, and don't just give your money to like, like individuals, because that's not effective. Do it in a way that's actually going to be more effective. It's going to distribute on a larger scale. So it, altruistic giving takes a lot of thought. Uh, it also requires a bigger, a bigger mentality, right? But I'm not going to be just just doing that one off. It feels very good to hand someone a, a, a tzedakah, but it's not the highest. It's not the highest level, right? On the other hand, the highest level to do it would be uh, would be would be in a way that makes a big splash because you're gonna you're gonna create a ripple effect. So, all right. Anyway, would, selling, uh, right. Meaning it helps and it may be more effective. It doesn't. It doesn't have that sort of that Rambam level of, of like, oh wow, what's, no, no, this person wants no cover for themselves, right? But how about you create a culture in where the biggest keep goes to the oldest person, and everybody is fine to to pay for that anonymously. Like that would be a really hard thing to do, but it would be amazing. Right? Today, when someone donates anonymously, everyone's like, oh, it's anonymous. I know anonymous shorts. <laughs> I dive in right next to anonymous every day. But there are people who do it and then give it to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, yeah, no, no. There's, there's, there's a lot of that. You can do great stuff. I'm not saying you, that, that doesn't, that has to be done at all, but the point he's making is that if an effective way to do things is to be self-serving. So, okay. 
So let's go a little further. Alexander, so Alexander Amar Dabar Chacham Yosir, every Medina is built from people Everything's mine. So why did someone build this 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 property? For his business, he wanted to make money. How many people had to had to go into my bread preparation? Or remember that guy, the the, the uh, A.G. Jacobs, who wrote the book, the law, the the year of living biblically. He also wrote a book about thanking people for everything they got. And he went on a journey to try to find everyone who would participate in making his cup of coffee, to thank the bean growers, and to thank the uh, the people who paved the road where the truck was able to travel on. He got into every, the people who made the cup, right? Not just the barista, right? But every single person in the road. So really, how many people contributed to your success? I wrote some Larvi Kesef. Kol Nasa Mitoch Tachud. Everything was because competition, capitalism, right? This is the this is the source of all success. You can tell he's a big capitalist. He's a big um, he's a big uh, Ayn Rand. Uh, whether he knows who Ayn Rand w- was or not, he would be an Ayn Rand uh, person. The most altruistic way to do it in life is to be successful, to be competitive, to have uh, you know to promote free, open trade, open business, not to regulate things, not to have government uh, requirements. Right. The best way to promote tzedakah is not to ask people to give tzedakah required of them. Is to let them become really rich, and then they'll give tzedakah. Because it's unethical, says Ayn Rand, to force them to give tzedakah because that's theft. So again, Rabbi, Rabbi Lichtenstein Zal said that Ayn Rand was way wrong. That was not Torah. So it's interesting how we can go either extreme. So he would—he's more of a capitalist here. Ayn Rand. Ayn Rand. A Y N. Ayn Rand. She's a philosopher, writer. Uh, Right, right. From the what is it, sixties? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Russian philosopher, I think. Right. Okay, so in Cain, Tan Alexander, Anoshim Shalo Ichbalahim Atzmam, Shainam Dogim, Klaal Atzmam, Kholakad Omer, Kulchal Shokhat. If you have people who they live their life and they say it's all yours, it's all yours. No. The entire talus is yours. No, it's mine, right? Hain be etzim gormim lachmal, those people will destroy the world. Those people, you're so nice. Will never make it. Kishadam wrote to Leo Dashir when you really want to be rich. Yivne by base haroshes, yitzur, begadim, muslin, you have nice clothing and homes and marble, right? Aval shne anashim shomim lo atatikach, don't you take it. Atatikach, you take it. Imashkafa sam zuti ye nachla klal ha ochosea. Besof lo ye afil lechem lechol. There won't even be bread to eat. Dark lechol desha. They're going to have to eat the poor grain or grass. That's Marida Malchus. The reason I would kill those two guys, right, is because those people, yeah, you can't live in a world like that. You can't live in a world where everybody, everybody is not is not looking out for themselves so much. By the way, we would call that financial and, and emotional suicide, right? You're only, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's just the other person, right? What is St. Pirkeabos, right? He said, the person says, Shali, Shali, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that too. Yeah, that's the, that's no. one. Iman Anili right? And then um, there's an idea in Avos Perike, and it goes like this Haomer Shali, Shali. If you say what's mine is mine, and Shokha Shokha, what's yours is yours, that's a Mida Benonis. There's a little bit of Sodomite in that. That's why he didn't like Ayn Rand. Because if you're not willing to participate and share with the other person, there's something off with you a little bit. We get that. It's a little bit uh, Alexander here. That's Sedon. Shali Shalcha, what's mine is yours. Shalcha Shali, I'm a it's a fool. You just trade, that person's a fool. Shali Shalcha, Shalcha Shalcha, what's mine is yours, and what's yours is yours, that's a chassid. And Shalcha, well, so that has to be explored a little bit, but Shali Shali, Shalcha Shali, what's yours is mine, what's mine is mine, that's a Russia. So, according to the mission of Abbas, at least, Alexander's wrong, right? We have to have a compromise. But what he was suggesting was at least something that became enshrined in our story is there, um, there is an idea that, that you can't walk around saying everything's yours, right? We need a little bit of a drive to, uh, to, to, to succeed. And with that, we'll continue next time as we explore the rest of this, this, this Mahalach. He's trying to develop an understanding of the big three of Shabbos, 
Rosh Chodesh, and Mila. So basically, Alexander didn't really learn anything from this experience. He still 